Hi, everybody. Uh, nice to see you all here. Uh, it's been a year since I've been in, in, uh, on an event uh, organized by PHP Serbia, and uh, they grow so much that I'm really, really, really glad. Um, my name is Luka Muzinic. I come from Zagreb, Croatia. I like to call myself a PHP developer. I help organize Zagreb PHP user group, so if you are ever in a vicinity, please join us uh, either as a speaker or uh, as an attendee. We'd love to, love to um, have you. I work for a company called Home Exchange. Uh, it's a membership site where you can uh, create your profile and meet other members and exchange your home with them for a, for a short while. So if you are looking to go to a different country and don't want to pay for uh, uh, for a place to stay, for an expensive hotel, you can actually use this site and um, swap, swap homes with people. Um, I suggest you try it out. But uh, enough about me. Um, I would like to talk about me a little bit more. Uh, so I'm going to share uh, a little bit of, about my first experience with, with testing, because first experiences are always fun or painful. Um, I'm old enough to use the word uh, back in the day. So back in the day, I was reading uh, an article about testing. It was the first time I was yeah, uh, heard of a subject called testing. And of course, I said, OK, let's, let's see what this testing is all about. Uh, article opened up, um, said, OK, we should write some tests, and we should write some tests first and said, OK, for example, we have uh, a method that wants to add two numbers. So technically, we'll write a, tests and write, write a test, and if we take numbers 2 and 7, we should get 9. And then the article continued into developing that method and just said, return 9. So I was thinking, OK, smart ass. Um, I see what you, what, where you're going. And after that, he added a little bit more test cases. Uh, his function, of course, failed, but he fixed it. And that was testing. Yay! Looks easy, very simple, very practical. Uh, I see the benefits, and I wanted to use that uh, at my code. So I opened uh, uh, my project. I opened my code base about testing, about how these all things um, work out. And one similar pattern from all the art articles that I've uh, been reading emerged. Um, and this was this type of pyramid. I think that will answer your question about how many um, tests you need to have. Uh, this pyramid roughly says, in ideal project, you should have a lot of unit tests. And that will be the solid base of your pyramid. And after a while, you'll add some functional tests. You need to have less of them. And on the top, you will have some uh, acceptance tests. And this really is uh, an ideal way um, on which you can uh, organize your tests and um, show you how many of each you should have. But of course, that's that's a real world. Uh, that's yeah, example. Uh, the real world is slightly slightly different. But let's let's go. Let's try and build our pyramid from the from the bottom from the bottom up. So first, we have, we have unit tests. Um, very good thing about unit tests is they are fast. So you can have a lot, a lot of them. Um, if you want to have thousands of them, uh, and, and if you want to have hundreds of them, it will not make that much of a difference in terms of um, running that test suite. So you can be go, go rich and just throw the unit, unit tests in your project. See, it's, it's very easy. We are already making prog progress. Um, if you want to step up the pyramid into the realm of functional testing, uh, you will find out that they are a little bit slower, but um, you can, as Sebastian said, test end-to-end -end application. You can uh, test, uh, test more about how your uh, application perform in terms of uh, here's a request, I, I get a response. Uh, also have in mind that as these tests are yeah, a little bit slower but still usable, uh, you just have to be reasonable uh, with, with their numbers. So let's kick it up the notch um, and say, okay, we want to have uh, less, less functional tests. And uh, in the end, 
uh, the very slow and very sluggish ac uh, acceptance tests. Uh, they are slow because they have to run inside of the browser and they test your application as a, as a whole system. Uh, but they are very, very useful. Uh, do not throw them away because they give you a, the opportunity to even do some sort of uh, black box testing. So if you came to an application that you don't know anything about, you can still cover it with tests and say, okay, I'll start here and 10 clicks after that I need to end up here. And just, yeah, you have a system that you can repeat and see if everything is, everything is working. So this technically, um, this would give you a rough overview of testing, testing 101. Um, my talk title was Codeception and it mentioned test framework, test frameworks. So um, why would you use a, a testing framework? Um, my best answer is, uh, do you use, uh, or the question, do you use frameworks in your everyday coding? Is there somebody that doesn't? Uh, don't be shy, raise your hand. Okay, one person, thank you. Uh, but the majority of us use frameworks to speed up our development. Uh, I use frameworks because I don't want to worry about injections and I'm not smart enough to cover all the uh, test uh, all the cases that uh, injection can yeah, burn my site to the ground. Um, so I use the frame framework. It also speeds up my coding and yeah, same logic should be applied to testing as well. If we can uh, use some sort of framework that allows us to write tests faster and even maybe uh, makes testing fun, we, should, we will use testing more uh, as it will not be that much of a pain. So that's the reason behind using a, a test framework. Um, one discussion point that we can discuss in the social and afterwards is how do you test a testing framework? Uh, because at some point you will say, okay, every framework should have tests, so basically we are writing tests to test tests and then we need to write some more tests that test tests and yeah, we are going in the similar pattern. Uh, so this is strictly for the, for the social afterwards. Okay, you are at the Codeception talk and your friends are going to uh, ask you, okay, what is Codeception? This guy has been talking about, yeah, testing one once, showing us some pyramids. Uh, we're not in e Egypt. Uh, what, what is Codeception? Uh, if you want to give them the too long, didn't read, uh, version, you just say Codeception is PHP unit on steroids. With Codeception, tests are written in a PHP language, uh, but you cleverly use uh, variable names and method names, so you can almost write sentences in terms of yeah, commands. So um, even non-technical person like designers, managers, and, and such folk could understand it if they just uh, strip off the dollar signs and minus greater than. Uh, so it will be uh, understandable to non-technical people. Also, a uh, thing that we as developers tend to forget, we tend to forget uh, to put ourselves uh, in the user perspective, to walk our site as our users would. So we do not um, have the same behavior. We just think, oh, okay, this is the best way to use our application. And we forget uh, that there are real users out there. Uh, so using Codeception, using um, acceptance testing, we are forcing ourselves to think about how our users should interact and how our users will interact with our, with our site. Also, Codeception integrates with a lot of modern, uh, modern frameworks. So you don't have to worry about whether you can um, in inject the request and response objects. Uh, this works out of the box. Uh, E2 framework even uh, uses Codeception as its standard uh, testing suite. So it has been really, really uh, running around in, um, uh, in the community. And what is really great about the sole development of, of Codeception is that they didn't go reinventing the wheel. They didn't, didn't say, let's discover hot water. They just used proven packages, packages and just said, okay, let's build uh, on top of them. So the best way to uh, learn about Codeception, to see what it's made of, is to look at its composer file. So Codeception in its current version, I think it's 2.07. Uh, hopefully it's not changed since uh, yesterday. Uh, it's a 
quite modern uh, application. It's using PHP 5.4. Uh, as a requirement, you have to have JSON and MBString uh, uh, extensions. And as, uh, as we mentioned, it's built on top of PHP Unit. It really wraps, wraps around them. Uh, it uses Facebook Web Driver to communicate uh, with the Selenium server. Uh, it uses de facto standard for fetching stuff across the internet, Guzzle. And uh, as you can see, a lot of Symfony components. So you have a finder there because you are yeah, grabbing a lot of files from your disk. You have a console because the Codeception, after all, is console application. YAML configured, and uh, the rest of the are just helpers to get um, you uh, to get your uh, writing tests easier. Especially the CSS selector, which allows you to translate CSS path to to XPath, which we'll see how it uh, how it behaves because it's yeah uh, really great. So quickly, if you want to start using Codeception, you just have to download one file. It's a far archive. Uh, I usually put it in a shared folder so I can access it anywhere. And I just run Codes, uh, Codeception Bootstrap. What it does, it um, creates the test folder. It creates the configuration files, gives you some example files, uh, modifies your git ignore, and Practically from this point on, you are ready to ready to roll. If you don't have any tests, uh, just running conception run would, yeah, it would be green. Zero tests all, all, all have passed. So this is how quickly it is to install it. You don't have to go through any any uh, big procedures. Um, now um, let's remember our testing pyramid and let's start from the from the bottom up. Let's start writing some. Some unit tests. I, I can assure you, it's it's very easy. You can oh no, you can follow along. Um, there are actually two ways to uh, generate a unit test in Codeception. First way is just tell, just just say to him uh, generate PHP unit, and that will create a file that extends from a PHP unit test framework. And this is standard PHP unit file. If you ever tried PHP unit, you would get the same thing. This may seem like a not necessary thing because why would, would, he, would we add something like that? But it allows you um, to use your current code base of tests. So if you have some tests already written in PHP unit, just include it here. You don't have to do anything. Uh, no additional work is needed to uh, have, them, have them running. So just copy paste, code will run them. And if you want to, uh, for example, say generate test, that will create the code test file which is basically a wrapper around the PHP unit test case. So um, when I say wrapper, you'll see familiar things. You don't have a uh, startup and uh, teardown method and anymore you have before and after, which is practically the, the same thing. Um, and all the assertions that you are familiar with work here. Added bonus is that you can use some codeception modules. I will talk about modules later, um, so we'll see what's uh, what's going on. So with, with this, practically we, we've written some unit tests and we have the f foundation of, our, of our, our pyramid. Now it's time to step up the notch and start um, writing functional tests. So with functional tests, basically the command is the same. We just say, yeah, create me a test in, in, the, in the functional directory. And basically this is where conception starts to really shine. This is the part when you can remember uh, what I said, that this is almost human-like language, almost BDD style. So I just say, yeah, I have a mobile API, uh, an API for, I'm, for my mobile application. I want to test it. I'm setting up some headers. I'm issuing a GET request, and then just want to see if uh, everything is like it should be. Do I have the JSON? Is it uh, 200 OK? Or something like that. And please, please note how uh, readable the code is. If, even if you were not a PHP developer, I can assure you that you would understand this if you know a little bit uh, of English. So um, with functional tests, I remember um, the most, uh, the, the part that differentiates them from uh, acceptance test, uh, tests is that uh, you don't need a running web server because you are simulating the request and the response and you are accessing the uh, application directly. 
Uh, so that's the reason because uh, that's the reason why they are still fast and still quite quite usable. <laughs> and here we are at the top of our pyramid. We say again, Codeception, please generate an acceptance test for us, and this is basically the Codeception selling point. Um, if you want to pers persuade anyone into using Codeception, show him this, because this is uh, the part where you can, you can actually describe all the user actions. So if you want to say, okay, user, please come to a login page, click login, the pop-up will open, click here, enter username, enter password, JavaScript enabled, this really works. Uh, in the behind, it uh, talks to a Selenium server, so you will see the browser fire up, and um, uh, you will see yeah, movement on the on the screen. Uh, for managers, this is yeah excellent. Oh, the browser is working by itself. Excellent. Um, when I mentioned CSS selector, um, this is the part where um, it's really useful uh, because using CSS selector, this is a little bit more resilient to changes than uh, pure XPath. Um, usually, when I mention XPath to people who worked with Selenium. They have a strange look on their face, their eyes start twitching. Uh, but with CSS selector, you are just a little bit more um, safe if the designer just uh, wants to shuffle a few elements because the, it, it, it's most likely that it will be still triggered by, by the CSS selector that you mentioned there. And of course, JavaScript testing, that's, uh, that's even perfect. So you've written. Uh, a lot of your tests. You've written a lot of unit tests. You created the whole pyramid. Uh, now it's time to run them. So quick and easy, just say Codeception run and our, te our test will start, start running. So here it is in action. Okay, something is failing, of course. And here's our browser going on. And yeah, I'm working, no, no hands, look ma. So if you want to sell this to your managers, yeah, do it like this. I also mentioned that Codeception has a lot of, uh, a lot of modules. Most likely your application is not just PHP and MySQL, you also have a lot of different things, a lot of different areas that you need to cover. You also are not working on some custom-built framework. You are probably using something more popular. So um, all these modules allow you to test your application as a whole. For example, common line interface module can just yeah, execute something, see if it's there. Uh, if you have a databa database, you probably do, you can define uh, parameters, you can even define uh, okay, here's a test database import this before we start all the tests and you can do lookups if something is really, really written in database. I had a case of yeah, having to do some tracking cookie and I really, I really, really wanted to make sure that it's actually in my, uh, it's actually written in my dat database and this yeah, saved me a couple of times. File system, you may, may want to check if some log file is generated. Uh, you may want to see if something is, is in memcache, uh, you need to flush memcache, any kind of possibility that really um, comes to your mind. So with, with these modules you really have uh, an array of possibilities of testing not just your application but other parts, other parts as well. Um, there are a few alternatives, um, frankly I didn't use any of them, I just see that they are mentioned on Twitter and in, in podcasts. Uh, so if anybody is going to try them out, please let me know. Uh, I would like, like to yeah, uh, pick up some of your, of your experience uh, using it. So this is all yeah, dandy. This is all nice. Uh, but you also have to hear about some embarrassing thing that happened to me. And you also have to hear about how the Codeception saved my yeah, behind, <coughs> to put it nicely. So. Um, first embarrassing question, how many of you accidentally emailed some of your site members? Okay, I'm not alone. 
how many of you emailed all of your site members? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, what I've been yeah, using is using the copy of production database with all the real email addresses. And a few embarrassing moments later, I realized that I've just emailed everybody. So I found out later, years later, uh, that there's a better way to do it than using live SMTP servers is to install MailCatcher. And MailCatcher just sits in your, uh, uh, as a daemon on, on your port. You just forward all the emails to there. And what is great about it is that it has a RESTful uh, interface. So if you are writing tests that are sending the mail, you can just fetch from the mail catcher and see if the mail was set correctly, if the headers were correct, if the mail contains the verification code, all that with the great possibility of not emailing the real, real users. So this is one uh, of the many things that I found really, really cool about uh, using Codeception. Uh, also, I've been receiving uh, bug reports. Yeah, who hasn't? Uh, but this particular bug report was, um, yeah, we have a strange behavior on our search engine. Sometimes the results on second page also repeat themselves on page seven. And also the results from 58 page repeat them. Okay, this is going to be pain, especially as we have 100 search result pages for some reason. Um, if you have, an, um, have a need to do a complete set testing, so you, for example, test all the articles in your database or all the search pages, you can just fire up Codeception. Um, this allowed me to have uh, a system that will just go through all 100 pages, collect the IDs, and to make sure that I really fix the bug. And uh, more importantly, I can uh, reproduce the same test on my staging server and my production server. So yeah, another plus for, for Codeception. We had a board in our office that said it has been one number of days since we broke our mobile API. That's why I had the mobile API example. Uh, because usually when we develop the application, we always tend to forget that there's a mobile application that's accessing our API. And we somehow managed to break it weekly. Um, and the guy that's been developing mobile app just comes, hey, did you change something with mobile app? Oh, not again. So um, mobile API was just a part, part of the site. <laughs> That's, um, that we never tested, we, yeah, when you do the F, F5 refreshing testing, uh, we never yeah, tested that, and we usually forgot something. When we included that in our um, standard test suite, we just yeah, put our mind into ease and the mobile developers stopped coming to our office. Um, so if you need to test parts that are rarely used, that you have some interface behind two login screens, that nobody use, uses, yeah, it's likely that you will break something in the future. So just cover that with tests and yay, no more developer guy coming in. Uh, also, um, we had this habit of deploying a new version of, of the site and then, okay, can you just click around the site to make sure if everything works? Um, you can specify to a Codeception, you can say, okay, use environment production and then just run this part of the test suite on production to see if, uh, if everything works like it should. You'll ex exclude uh, examples for like changing the database, but if you want to see if the search is working, if the login page is working, this is really, really the, uh, the way to go and it can save you time on, on uh, not having to click around the site and uh, yeah, making sure that you did not forget anything. So my time slot is almost up, and I, I have to leave you with some, some, some homework. Um, I would really like that you give Codeception a try, because it's, let's, say, let's say it's very easy. You just download one file, and if you don't like it, you can delete it later. But yeah, if you take one thing from this, from this talk, take this one. Give it a try, see how it, see how it goes, see how it feels. Um, if you want to do a next step, try using it with your clients. Try using it with no, not non-technical person. Um, you will see that with the 
almost nature-like um, language likeness. It's very suitable for uh, client collaboration, for talking about some, some scenarios. And while you're doing this, you're also writing some, some tests for the, for the future. Um, it's also very useful if you are receiving, uh, I like to call them hand-me-down projects, projects that nobody wants. Um, so if you are a, a new developer on a project, or if a junior developer comes to the project, you can give them, okay, uh, for the next few days you will just uh, click around the site to see uh, how it's working to get familiar with. Why don't you write some acceptance tests and yeah, help us um, grow our code, uh, help, help us grow our, t our, t our test uh, base a little bit. So it's very useful and it's very easy, t easy for them to uh, get a handle, handle on it, on stuff. Um, if, even if they didn't use PHP uh, a lot, it's really, really simple just to, um, just to write, um, write out some methods. Also, you will, you will notice that I mentioned that they will start by um, writing acceptance tests first. Because, yeah, in real life, if you don't have um, enough knowledge to do unit testing to yeah, start building the pyramid from the bottom up, yeah, do something and write uh, a few acceptance tests just to have, have your mind on, on ease. Um, last thing that you will find out, and I found it out in my previous company where we started using the codeception, is that people start talking about testing and there were not, uh, not talk about testing like it's hard, it's something that uh, your team lead makes you do it. It's talking about testing uh, in, a, in a fun way. And we really saw a boost in, uh, in, the, in the morale in terms of uh, moving our team to uh, yeah, some sort of testing, testing culture and people talking about testing like, like it's fun. Um, I know that you might be against testing, uh, that you might heard that testing is not necessary, etc., etc. I just say give Codeception a try and you'll find out that you're losing arguments every day uh, and that you'll yeah, embrace the testing culture. So thank you very much for your attention. I have put the slides uh, there and all the links are there. Uh, please uh, come to join in page and rate my talk because yeah, I want to hear uh, your feedback on this. Thank you.